Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kenny Vaughn. He's going to talk about touring with Chris Stapleton. He, I was, he was a uh, songwriter. This is before, um, way before uh, he was with uh, the Steel Drivers, and then he was in the Johnson Brothers, and then he went out solo. Uh, but this is before the Steel Drivers, and he was just having some traction, writing songs for. Uh, music grow acts and this is probably you know 20 years ago you know or uh, thereabouts i'm not sure completely but you know in that in that range and uh i remember the first time you know he's this real quiet shy guy you know hey, nice to meet you you know we have a band you know tunes up 10 a.m for a demo session you know and we got and uh they put out charts you know and and he and, and, and you know so he's gonna sing the first one for us you know he gets his guitar and He's in the vocal booth with his guitar. He's playing his ass off and singing. You know, he's got a Gibson J45 or something, you know. And and I'm like, whoa, this guy is good. I walked in there and looked at him and I was like, dude, you know, where did you come from? You know, wow. And um, that's how I first heard about him, was working with him, you know, in demo sessions. Yeah, we opened a lot of dates for him. Um, and we were the only opening act on some a lot most of those shows i think there's only a couple that we did with a maybe oh yeah brent cobb was on there we were the se we were the second act brent cobb went on first but you know the way his stage set is um it's it sounds pretty good for a big venue you know i don't know really big venues don't sound very good but and his audience is more of a listening crowd too nothing like the music grow acts who you know they're generally extremely in inebriated you know i mean we opened for eric church once and i've never seen ever in my entire career people that drunk and that many people that drunk i've never before or since i was we were shocked we were just like whoa those people aren't even home i mean they're just walking digestive tracks by the time you're up there playing they're not they can't even focus they're just like you know they won't remember this show well, Stapleton gig, you put, go out and play, and they're all looking at you and watching you play, you know. They even would clap sometimes for a solo or something, you know, but they were focused, you know. And I was making eye contact with people, and, you know, they were listening. They're a listening crowd. Not um, really a, a drinking crowd at all, really, you know, very attentive, and a lot of different types of people in the audience, you know, older folks and younger folks and, um, you know, different kinds of people. You know, it's sort of a mix, you know. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's just the three guys. It's just Chris and his bass player and his drummer. A lot of shows were like that. And sometimes Mickey Raphael is up there playing harmonica. He's not out with Willie. Um, he has a standing gig with Chris. Chris said, anytime you want to come, you know, just come on up and I'll pay you, you know. And um, sometimes Dave Cobb would be out playing acoustic guitar. Sometimes uh, Paul Franklin was playing steel. Just depending, you know, it was very loose, you know. But it was all always JT on bass and Derek on drums and Chris on guitar, you know, electric guitar. How rare is that for somebody on this scale that's into the <laughs> music business? Well, uh, you know, extremely, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't exist. No, I mean, in any genre, you know, to have like a sort of a modular loose band, you know. Yeah, okay, we'll do it with three. No, oh, yeah, we'll bring him along. It really, I mean, his voice, is, he'll fill up an arena real good. It sounds great. He's a good guitar player, good sounds, great band, you know, great drummer and bass player. Well, you know, he's, he's from East Kentucky, grew up probably in a, you know, you know poor community. And um, you can tell that the, the guy that sat in his bedroom when he was a teenager is still the guy on stage, you know. He's, you know, the music lover in him is still the guy that drives that whole thing, you know, which is cool. I love it. I played through that amp and um, he had about, I have one uh, from, I think mine's a 61 Brown, Con, Brown Princeton that uh, some guy gave me and it's in perfect condition. You know, I did change the speaker because I don't like, you know, the speakers Fender used at that time and... Uh, but other than that, you know, it, I just took it to 
Todd Sharp, and I said, go through this and make sure it's all running right. Man, it's, it's a great amp. But he had like seven of them or more, maybe. It was, it was at least seven. And he only used one on stage, but he had one that he really liked better than the other six, you know. So that was what the Fender had to get to that level. They had to make an amp that, that cloned all the characteristics of, you know, the one he liked the most. And I think it took him a while. I think there were quite a few prototypes before they nailed it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of expensive, but not really too bad. It's not as expensive as a, a matchless or a, you know, something like that, you know. But it's, you know, it's a good amp. Sounds good. It's simple, just volume and tone, you know, and a, a little um, tremolo circuit, and that's it, you know, four knobs. When you changed out your speaker and yours, what did you put in there? Well, I had a... Uh, uh, an eminence uh, 10 inch with an Alnico magnet. So I used that. I, I just happened to have it, you know, in a box. And I was like, oh, let's try that one. You know, I like Alnico magnets. I don't really care for ceramic magnet speakers. A lot of, you know, most guitar players like ceramic magnets, but I don't know. I, I like the Alnicos. Well, he's, you know, he's a family man. His wife's a really good singer. She's on stage with him a lot, you know. I used to work with uh, do all Paul Kennerly's uh, a lot of stuff at, for Paul Kennerly demos. You know, I mean, I, a lot of most of it was overdubbing guitar parts with Paul. You know, and uh, he had a studio and really nice gear. You know, I wouldn't even have to take a guitar and amp to that place. You know, he was a Buddy Holly nut, so he had you know Buddy Holly amps and Buddy Holly strats you know with heavy strings and all that kind of stuff and he wanted everything really clean but anyway uh, I was like you know Paul who is that singer he says oh that's Morgan she's fantastic Kenny I said no kidding and that turned out to be the lady that married Chris yeah I never met her during that time I just I'd put on the headphones and be like wow that's a good singer you know his, his demos were always cool, really cool. We're, we're actually going to open for him in Detroit on Friday. Yeah. We haven't done any for a couple of years with him, but uh, we're going to do that one off. I think there's four bands in the bill. So, If you'd like to hear more of Kenny Vaughn telling stories, click this playlist, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you. This damn fly.